In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to take a full color photograph like what we have here and we're going to convert it to black and white and just have certain areas red. I'm sure you've seen shots like that, you know, very cliche ones with the uh, woman with the red rose and the rose is red and everything else is black and white. So we're going to do this here with this shot that I've done from Times Square. Now, right now I'm working on the Cintiq 22 Touch and uh, this is the Cintiq and I can draw on the screen here, which is really nice, gives me a lot of control. I have the express keys on top that I can program to do different things and the touch strips are on the bottom so I can actually just slide my fingers on the bottom there and using this brush here will show me the different things I'm doing with the touch strips. Now one of the other things that's really neat is having the multi-touch on screen. A lot of the time and, and you'll see when I begin working I'm going to use both hands. I will be drawing and painting with this hand and navigating with the other hand so I can zoom in by pinching and then I just grab two fingers and I can just move around. So as I'm painting, I can just be moving this around nice and easily. Now, one of the questions that people do ask about these is, you know, when your hand gets on here, does it smudge it? Does it paint it? And no, what it actually has is palm rejection, which means that it recognizes that a palm is on here and it knows the difference between a palm and a pen because a pen has a small tip. The palm is a large area. So it's known as palm rejection. So I can actually go here, paint, and still go and move around. So it takes a little bit of getting used to using the two hands, but once you do it, it becomes very intuitive and easy to use. So I'm just going to pinch and zoom this back out again. And let's get started with our technique right now. So what we're going to do is the first thing, I'm just going to make sure everything is showing. There we go. We've got a whole screen. I'm going to apply adjustment layer again. Because one of the things that works really well for Welcome Tablet when we're working with photographs is adjustment layers and masks. In fact, I use them all the time and that's how you can get uh, really great results. So what we're going to do is go down to the adjustment layer here and the thing we want to do is black and white. So we're just going to go up, we're going to choose black and white and you'll notice a couple of things will happen. One, the photograph looks black and white and the second one, our properties panel is here. Let me just pull this over a little bit just to get it out of the way. And what we can do is we can adjust the way this black and white looks by selecting this little tool here. And now that that's on, we can actually click and drag in certain areas and notice or lighten or darken certain shades or colors. We know that's the yellows it's adjusting right now because of all these cabs. And so you can actually go through just touching different parts of the photograph and just kind of get the black and white conversion the way you want it to look. Just by simply selecting on these underlying colors. So I'm actually gonna do it like that. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just actually just going to collapse now the properties panel and I'll just drag it in there so I can just dock inside my, uh, my tools there. Right, so now here we are inside the black and white adjustment layer. So what we want to do now is we want to paint. So I want to paint with black. The reason being, of course, that white there, when white is on that adjustment is full strength. When it's filled with black, it hides the adjustment in that area. So I'm going to grab my brush. Now one of the things I showed you earlier on, let's open it up again. Notice that what I like to set is the transfer mode and the shape dynamics. Transfer and shape. Make sure these are set to pen pressure. Size is pen pressure and transfer is pen pressure. And then turn them both off. The reason I do that is now I can toggle the menus up here and I can use the opacity or the pen pressure. Had these been on, like if the transfer was turned on here, I cannot turn it on and off up here. It doesn't affect it, but if I turn it off there, notice transfer on and off, size on and off. So we have that control. So what we're gonna do this time though, is I'm not gonna do anything with the opacity because I want the opacity to be full force when I paint the color. What I'm gonna do is change the size only, and that enables me to get into those little nitty gritty areas by using a lighter touch and cover more area by using a heavy touch and that saves me having to constantly adjust the brush size. So we're gonna go up here, choose size, make sure we've got black selected, and notice we've got a pretty large brush area. If I go very light, notice it's a very small area that I'm painting. If I go heavy, we're gonna paint a larger area, see that? I'm just gonna undo that. And one of the things I am gonna do is I'm just gonna drop the overall brush size down because that brush size that you see is right, right now is if I press full force, that's how big the brush is gonna be. I don't want it to ever be that big for what I'm doing. So I'm going to use a touch strip. I'm just going to click on here. Notice that this shows the different things that are on. So I'm going to go down to brush size. And with brush size selected, as I slide up 
notice the brush size gets smaller as I slide down it gets bigger and that's one of the things you can be, be working on too while you're working so I'm just going to set my brush size to about there and the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to move over a little bit and now I can begin notice with gentle touch I'm painting around the edges so what I usually do is I'll start with a gentle touch and I'll just go around the edges and and here's another thing when you get to this point, notice it's natural for the hand to flow this way. If I want to flow this way, it's an unnatural movement. There's a couple of ways you can do that. One is you can take the Cintiq itself and rotate it. And that's what a lot, a lot of people love to do is to literally rotate the tablet. The other option is if we go back in here, is Photoshop has a tablet rotation built in. So we can um, canvas rotation. Put your thumb down. Grab your finger and at that point here, we can actually just rotate like this. So if you want to just make it go where your hands want to work, you can rotate your canvas just like that. Now use a, a harder brush to paint. I'm pressing harder, it's just filling in those areas. So you can see that. Now if you want to reset the rotation that's down here, just double tap and that will reset it. Same with the size, in fact, if you double tap the magnifying glass, that will also reset it. And we can use our two fingers to scroll around. So there we go, we've painted one of those. So I'm just going to grab my brush and I'm just going to quickly go through. You can see it's very precise when we get in there. So let's do it again. And uh, this time I'm just going to paint this one a little quicker. Just going in there using a gentle touch around the edges. Painting around the cab. Fill it in. Nice. Pinch it down. Looks good. Slide up a little bit. Let's grab this one. And a lot of the time, you know, when I'm doing stuff like this, I don't really need to do the rotation. I was just showing you how it works. But when I'm sketching and drawing, um, I do like to do rotation. And also with some really heavy retouching. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here. As you can see, New York City is a lot of yellow cabs. And so we're just picking up the little yellow colors here and another one there. And, you know, we've got some different stuff going on here. This is kind of interesting. Let's just kind of paint that in. So now we're looking at the ambulance. Maybe I'll go in here and paint this one a little bit. And you can see we can just kind of put a little color in there. So that's another option. Um, finally, let's grab two fingers here. We're going to scroll up a little bit. And I think what I want to do is do this bus here. Oh, there's another one on the crosswalk there. Do we want to do that? We can or we cannot. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave that one. And I'm just going to do the bus. And notice I'm just painting in here quickly. And it doesn't matter how hard I press as far as getting this to work full force. Because once again, I've got opacity turned off. And the only thing that's affecting it is size. So make sure I do it gently around the edges and then just kind of paint it in a little bit along there. Now, I'm going to get that yellow cab there. Now, what if I didn't want to get that yellow cab? You know, I've kind of gone a little bit over the line there. I can zoom in to see that. If I didn't want to include that because it kind of looks a little weird compositionally, then what I do is I just toggle. Right now, I've got the black selected. I change it to white because remember my front button here. I've set to the X key. So you could hit the X key or you can toggle by hitting that front button. Just X will go back and forth between black and white. So if black will uh, show the color underneath, then white is going to hide that color underneath. So let's go in there and just gently paint it back that way. So if you make a mistake, we can just go in there. And I'm even going to go in here, even though that yellow is showing there, I just don't want that yellow to come through at all. And that'll look right when I zoom out. See that? So you can uh, toggle backwards and forwards, make a mistake, just toggle it back. And you can see, you know, overall, this is what we do if we want to create this nice uh, effect. I'm going to hit the option key and tap so you can see this is where I've been working. Notice that there's no opacity there, only size. And as you can see, it's a cool effect, very easy to accomplish.